And then when Al Imam Ali became the leader of the Muslims, he relieved him of that responsibility. And this person came to Al Imam Ali and sort of made up, appeared to be supportive, understanding, etc., etc. When this tahkim took place, this Ash'ad, Ibn Qais, he began to circulate among the troops of an Imam Ali and say, look, we are now going to arbitration. He was a loud voice for this arbitration. Now, can we exclude, this is just a matter of common sense, can we exclude that during the times of encounters between both these sides, that Al Ashraf ibn Qais did not come into contact with Amr ibn al As from the other side? Could anyone exclude something like this? And if they did, and if they did, and there's reason to believe that if they personally didn't do that, this type of activity was in progress. That if the side of Muawiyah wins, then fine, we go on to a better economic life, as was the case during the reign of Uthman. But if the side of Ali begins to win, and we can see the future, the future is not going to look economically the way we want it to look. So, we can suggest a mechanism short of military defeat. And that's what exactly happened. Now, in all fairness, we have to point out that in the camp of an Imam Ali, there were those who said, no, all of this is a grand deception. The other side saying that we want to arbitrate the book of Allah in this affair, they are deceiving us. And this is nothing new. Remember, and here is where they understood the difference between the young person who volunteered to take the Mus'haf at Al-Jamal before hostilities broke out on orders from an Imam Ali. And he was cautioned, whoever was going to occupy that position is definitely going to be killed. And Imam Ali, unlike these tricksters, Muawiyah and Amr ibn al-As, and I know, brothers and sisters, some people will find these words to be harsh. But we don't say these words with bad feelings. We don't say these words with evil or sectarianism or any notion of division among the Muslims. We are only saying these words to try to learn from our own common experience. When Muawiyah and the, the suggestion came from Amr ibn al-As that this is what we should do, we should raise these masahif and ask when they knew that they were losing and ask the other side for this tahkim. Unlike Imam Ali who was conscious in al-Jamal of the relationship of the Zubair and Talha and Aisha, Umm al muminin to the Prophet himself. So he wanted to exclude a battle with them. So before any skirmish, any military encounter began, he sent someone to raise the Mus'haf 
to arbitrate this war before it sparks the bloodshed that it will cost all Muslims. But immediately they threw their spears at him. Imagine, is this a side that wants arbitration? Obviously not. The difference is that and Imam Ali did this with sincerity and to preclude, to exclude a war. Amr ibn al-As and Muawiyah did this not because they wanted to preclude or exclude a fitna among the Muslims but because they wanted to avoid a defeat. And there was this minority, let's call it, it wasn't the majority, no one really has a good grip on the numbers here, but it definitely was not the majority of people with Al Imam Ali. They said, we can see through all of this. First of all, how many times have, has the Imam sent the other side people to speak to them, individuals to reason with them, scholars who could answer them, and every time, every time, there was not one favorable or even accommodating response. And that was the truth. The other side was not interested. So, this minority among an Imam Ali's camp said, Why are we going to believe them now? You saw what they did to us when we approached Sufi. We wanted to have equal access to water. They would not even give us equal access. How do you trust them now? That was the way an Imam Ali thought. But what are you going to do? Are you going to agree with a few people, so to speak, of course, a few people is an exaggeration, but definitely these were not enough people who are going to be able to carry the decision with a calculated risk of success. That, was even, that wasn't even there. And had an imam accepted their opinion, they would have found themselves between two enemies. Instead of having one enemy, Muawiyah and Amr ibn al-As and the troops that were with them, in addition to that they would have had their own side now, the majority of them also their enemies. So, and in this fashion, arbitration was forced on these Muslims. And now, the camp of an Imam Ali was going back to Al Kufa, but it wasn't going back with one mind and with one heart. It was going back divided with a large number of them wanting to end this through negotiations and a smaller number of them wanting to confront them until Allah's will is done. And let me tell you the understanding of this position up until now seems to be correct. Because the ayah that was quoted earlier, وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا فَإِنْ بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى فَقَاتِلُوا الَّتِي تَبْغِي حَتَّى تَفِيءَ إِلَى أَمْرِ اللَّهِ 